1995. A very long time ago. It was also a very big year for the video game world in Japan and America. We were given the Sony PlayStation, a remarkable piece of technology that to me was a bigger part of my childhood and a part of my video game life more so than the Super Nintendo and the regular Nintendo. Now, growing up, that's what we had. I'm 25 years old, going out to seeing what we had. You know, back then it was the Nintendo, then the Super Nintendo. We have the Sega competing with the Super Nintendo, Console Wars. It was great. All three systems, amazing. They were amazing. Then, PlayStation 1 comes out. Minds were blown. To me, what I saw on those systems were phenomenal. Like, I, I couldn't believe what I was witnessing when I saw it at my cousin's house. I had no idea it was coming out. I was a little kid, so, you know, getting magazines and all that stuff, it was a little different. I lived through my cousins who were a couple years older than me to, rely, to relay these messages and show me what was going on. But these systems, the, the power of the PlayStation 1, the games... Crash Bandicoot, Twisted Metal, Croc the Legend of Gobos, Spyro the Dragon, The Odd World Games, Resident Evil, Breath of Fire, Final Fantasy was pretty much reborn onto that system. It was mind-blowing the stuff I was seeing. So, for years, I slowly became, became a Sony man. Now, Nintendo 64 came out in 96, yeah, like a year later, and it was great. I, I love the N64, I am still a Nintendo guy, but it still, to me, couldn't beat what I was witnessing on the PlayStation. There was a good point in my life where, when I was at my cousin's a lot or sleeping over, we would play the N64 more because it was the newer thing, but we still went back and we still played the PlayStation 1 a lot. Now, PS2 comes out in the year 2000, people are, are all psyched up about it, but a lot of us, including myself back then, were like, well gonna do with our old PS1 because all we've had for examples was you know Nintendo and Super Nintendo they weren't backwards compatible you couldn't play a Nintendo game on a Super Nintendo game and you couldn't play a Super Nintendo game on an N64 so we were all like you know what is this what are we doing with this thing here so Sony comes out and says hey no look our new systems are backwards compatible you'll be able to take all your games from your PS1 that you've collected over the last five years and you can change it all around and put it right into your PS2, even with the memory cards. That was amazing. But PS3 comes out, it's a technology swap, it's something different. It's a big boost in what we've been used to for the, for the previous five years. Unfortunately, even though the PS3 is backwards compatible, you couldn't put your own memory cards in them because there weren't USB slots for it. They were a different kind of memory cards, as you all know. So, PS4 is talking all this stuff, and, you know, people are like, well, we got the PS3, I mean, yeah, we had to restart everything, but we dealt with it, it was okay, you know, the system sucked on its launch, and it wasn't until 2008 when Metal Gear 4 came out, and everybody started buying them again, but now, the big A-bomb was dropped, the, the giant, like, douche turd, whatever you want to call it, was laid on someone's front porch and lit on fire. PS4 is not going to be backwards compatible. What the fuck is that about? Now, I don't understand that. People have been getting on my ass about DLC, and I'm like, really? DLC is the wave of the future, huh? Well, what did PlayStation just say? PlayStation Network stuff is not going to be taken over to the PS4. You won't be able to take any of that stuff. Really? So you're saying all the stuff that I bought on the PSN, all those DLC contents for video games, all those DLC games, you're telling me probably like the almost probably a thousand dollars that I've spent, I can't move over to the PS4? Your all-powerful system that can do anything as you say, but yet you don't want to tax it, you're worried about it, you don't want to tax your brand new powerful system? We, th this has been the biggest gap in video game history. This console life has been huge. This has been bigger than everything. It's been more than five years. So you're saying that it can't handle it? Really? So if it can't handle it, but people want to play their old games like I do, why not spend the extra money or just allow it to happen because you probably do have the technology to make it like that. 
I would pay the extra $150, if that's what it was, to play backwards compatible games. Because you're saying I can't play my PS3 games that I'm still collecting? I'm still collecting PS2 games. I just picked these ones up tonight. Digital Devil Saga and Persona 4. I'd love to play these at one point, you know? So you're saying those won't work? My, my PlayStation 1 Classic games aren't going to work on your brand new system? But this is what people want. Sony has been the company, as I pointed out earlier, that with every transition for their first two systems, you could play PS1 games on the PS2, obviously. You couldn't play PS2 on the PS1 games. Duh. But everyone's trying to tell me, well, you know, PS... You know, it's just, you know, you got the DLC, and that's the wave of the future. Really? If DLC is the wave of the future, I'll stick with my disc-based games from the old days, because I'll tell you one thing. Resident Evil 1. A game that is over 15 years old, pretty much. Not a scratch on it. Now, I bought this used, yes. But a lot of my other PlayStation games, yeah, they may have a little minor marks on it and everything, but I kept them clean, and a lot of them look like they're in brand new condition. So you're trying to tell me that you'd rather have DLC than an actual disc-based game. My parents taught me how to take care of my stuff. Whether it comes to video games, my art supplies, my computers, the technology I got, because the shit is expensive. Parents just don't have the money to drop like, you know, six hundred dollars on a new game or, or like a new system, or even sixty dollars on a game on a game. I mean, that's just ridiculous. So you have gotta take care of your stuff. You take care of your stuff, it lasts forever. I'm not saying like that PS1 games would last forever. They would wear down at one point. Everything does get worn down, but still, I could. I have played the shit out of Resident Evil 3 and Mega Man X4 for my PS1. Those are the two games I know I have played the shit out of over these, like, last, over 10 years. Even longer than that, even like 15 years. And they still work beautifully. They don't freeze, they don't skip, there's no problems loading it, and that was what, that's what was amazing about the PS3 for the backwards compatibility. These games looked a little bit better, and they loaded a little bit faster. It was amazing. So you're telling me your brand new system can't do this shit? Right. It really is just like a mind-boggling turn of events that this is what we're, we have to deal with right now. Because, like I said, I still haven't played a lot of these PS3 games, PS2 games, PS1 games. I still haven't even played them all. I just go out to random places and I'll, 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 I'll walk right by them and I'll be like, they're that cheap? Okay, I'm definitely going to buy that and everything. Sure, I may not get to play it anytime soon, and I try to make a point to. But regardless, this is what we're dealing with. And people have got to understand, backwards compatibility is not a bad thing, nor is it going to hurt your all-powerful system. If you've really been developing it this long, you've had this big of a generation game gap, you should be able to make an emulator that runs good. That should work fine, just like the PS3 did. You're saying that, like, you know, PS3 is going to, uh, PS4 is going to be better. You know, the PS3's restrictions was made it harder for the people to make games and everything. You know, cracking the codes weren't easy. The PS4 is going to do that. That's wonderful. That sounds like something we couldn't have done ten years ago. So add an emulator to the damn thing. Now I get that the PS3 at one point didn't do emulators anymore. That's fine. That's understandable, because the Wii did that. The Wii was backwards compatible with GameCube games. The newer Wiis that came out later will not backwards compatible. The Wii U, I don't know if it's backwards compatible or not. I don't think it is. I didn't really care much for the Wii U. But, so, you're saying that you don't want to tax it. Spend some time to make a PlayStation 4 that can do backwards compatibility. Run tests on it. Send it to people. Let them test it, and let and they'll let you know. And then, if it works, do that. Or give us a regular PlayStation Four that's not backwards compatible. Give us options. Get two systems, like 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 you did with the Wii U. Three hundred dollars for the white one, with pretty pathetic memory, and a black one for an extra fifty dollars with the game, and better memory. It's what you should do. And, like, I don't need people, like, bombarding my page and everything, saying, I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, blah, 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 blah. You're just an asshole. Why are you wearing sunglasses at night and everything? Why are you dressing black and white, blah, 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 blah. It's not the point, all right? This is not about targeting me. This is not about anything like that. We're trying to get these people to realize that the old ways are better. GameStop doesn't think that, like, you know, retro games like these sell. 
and everything. Oh, they sell all right. You go to a flea market and you try to buy some like classic games, they jack up the prices on these things. You know, I mean, it's sad that the, a lot of the mom and pop stores for used video games are gone these days. But the classics are what make games. It's like pretty much saying the whole history leading up to the PS4, we're just gonna wipe it clean. Like it's gonna be like the lost city. We're gonna we're gonna build over it. Like we're gonna build our empire of PS4 over the PS3, PS2, PS1. Just bury it. No one's gonna know the hidden cities down there. So that's what I'm trying to get at. We need backwards compatibility. The fact that our PSN games that we've spent so much money on can't transfer. Are you going to do some kind of like cloud thing that we can do it in the future maybe? I don't know. But this is, like I said, a big problem. Anybody else agree with me about this? Because I know there's a ton of people I've been running into who have been sending me messages about this. So, yeah, that's what we're facing right now. So for now, you know, hit the subscribe button if it's up here or down there. Hit the like button. Comment down below. Let me know what you think about all this. Because this is something that's really big and needs to be addressed fast. Because it comes out this year. PS4 comes out this year the holiday so we've got time to fix this or hopefully get the word out to playstation uh, this guy's at sony to just really think and stop smoking crack seriously so like i said do all that stuff and follow us on twitter and facebook because we have those i check them all the time i i answer everybody's questions let me know what you think let me know how you feel about this because i'm dying to know all other people's rage like mine so anyway thanks for listening to the rant Keep playing the classic games, keep playing the PS3, keep enjoying games, fight to have good games, and keep classics alive. So, until then, I will see you all next time.